14, 17, and we don't have time really to do a lot of teaching just on the subject, but I'll do whatever I can. The anointing comes. It's time to start laying hands on you. There are some things you receive from information, some things you get by impartation. Amen. My daddy always said the Holy Ghost can do more in five minutes than I can do in five years. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Great thing about the Holy Spirit is when you leave, we don't have a basket back there and say, all right, check the Holy Spirit here and come back and get him next Sunday. No, he's going home with you, amen? Right. With you all the time, praise the Lord. So Romans 14, 17, did you find that? Here, the apostle Paul says, the kingdom of God. Now, you know Jesus did a lot of teaching on the kingdom of God and how it operates. And the word kingdom of God, the word kingdom simply means what other translations say comes from the last three letters, the word D-O-M, which really could be translated the dominion of God, the dominion of God. So wherever God has dominion, the kingdom of God, our other translations say the realm of God. In other words, you step out of the realm of the natural, move over into the realm of God. Amen. <laughs> All right, other translations say the spirit dimension. Why would it say the spirit dimension? Because God is a spirit. He is a spirit. Amen. And as a spirit, he's given you his Holy Spirit so that you can receive everything he has for you. So Paul says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, or you could say this, it's not just a bunch of rules and regulations. Amen. Amen. So when you're moving over to being washed in the blood and being filled with the Holy Spirit, then you leave the realm just of rules and enter the realm of revelation. Amen? Amen. So the kingdom of God is not just a bunch of rules and regulation. It literally is a revelation of God's way of doing things. Amen? And he says, it's not meat and drink, but it is, and he lists three things. Number one, it is righteousness. So understanding righteousness in the New Testament, all the word righteousness means right standing with God, approved by God, favor with God, amen, free from a sense of sin or guilt or inferiority. If you read the Old Testament, it says, let the righteous rejoice. Let them exceedingly rejoice. In other words, in the kingdom of God, there is no penalty for excessive celebration. And the NFL, in the NFL, they may give you a penalty if you get a little too happy. But in the kingdom of God, you have an excessive celebration. God says, I like that. In other words, you want to get so happy until somebody says, I think that's a little excessive. Amen. That's the word of God. Let the righteous rejoice. Let them rejoice exceedingly rejoice. He says, rejoice before God. Hallelujah. And the scripture says, you rejoice in his mercy. You rejoice in his presence. And David rejoiced, bringing in the glory of God till David danced with all of his might. Amen. He ushered in the glory with a lot of loud shouting and praising and dancing. Amen. And we know David did not get dancing lessons. He didn't have on leotards trying to do some funny little dance. David was a warrior. He's a soldier, man. He killed 10,000 Philistines, killed the lion. It means he ain't no sissy. If you ever got in a fight, you'd like to have David fighting on your side. But when the glory and the presence of God came in, David said, I can't take it no more. Threw off his royal robe and started dancing like a wild man. 
says he danced with all of his might, so that means it wasn't like, well, praise the Lord. No, he says he was tired when he was over. He danced with all of his might, amen. And when he got home, his wife said, you looked ugly. You looked like a fool. So we know it wasn't pretty. Some people would receive more from God if they didn't have to be pretty all the time. So David danced until his own wife said, you look like a fool. You look ugly. And David blessed all of us when he talked back to his wife and said, I shall be yet more vile than this. It would have ruined the marriages of many men if David would have said, I'm sorry, honey. I'll never do that again. Instead, David said, <laughs> David said, that makes you unhappy, honey? Well, it's fixing to get worse. In other words, he said, it was the Lord that brought me out of the sheepfold. It was the Lord that made me king. It was the Lord that blessed me. And I was dancing before the Lord with all of my might. In the South, we say you got to dance with who brung you. Because if you go to a dance and you don't dance with who brung you, you ain't going to have no ride home. <laughs> and I think some people forgot who brung them. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for the Lord on your side, you could have been dead at least three times by now. You wouldn't be blessed. Come on, you wouldn't be doing nothing. And when the presence of the Lord is in there, sometimes you just want to praise and shout and laugh and act like nobody else is there. So it's between me and the Lord. He's the one that brung me. Ha, 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 ha. Amen. And so the righteous, so the revelation of righteousness is fundamental truth to the kingdom of God that you are the righteousness of God in Christ because of the blood of Jesus, and that's one subject. Amen. Tremendous subject. The second thing he says in the dominion of the kingdom of God is the peace of God. That means you're not disturbed, upset, frustrated all the time, which will give you indigestion and high blood pressure. In the kingdom of God, there's peace. Come on, peace in your heart, peace in your mind. You're not mad and upset and frustrated. Peace. Amen. And then the last one, he says, is joy in the Holy Ghost, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about in just a minute. Everybody say joy in the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. So he says, in the kingdom of God, there is this thing called joy in the Holy Ghost. In churches, we have a lot of teaching on the first two things. We just don't have no teaching on the last one. And if it ever breaks out, joy in the Holy Ghost <laughs> scares most pastors so bad that they have to throw that person out of the church because when a person gets full of the Holy Ghost, when the Holy Spirit gets loose, when somebody yields to the Holy Spirit, there's this ph phenomenon called joy in the Holy Ghost. And this joy in the Holy Ghost is so wild that on the day of Pentecost, they accuse them of being intoxicated. In other words, the, those on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 were the original drinkers. I don't know if they got a t-shirt or not, but Jesus said, come to me and drink. Listen, John chapter 7, the trend of saying about it. Jesus said, come to me and drink. What are you talking about, Jesus? He said, rivers will flow out of your belly, and I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. Yes. So that means you have to have a drinking relationship with God, not just a thinking relationship. Yes. In other words, the church has too many thinkers and not enough drinkers. Matter of fact, if you would drink better, you would actually think better. But when you drink from the presence of God and get filled with the Holy Spirit, he will help you to lose your mind. All right, now listen close. I was preaching in Louisiana when I first started preaching, and an older guy came up to me and he said, I love the way you preach. He said, but I'm afraid that if I believed all that, I would lose my mind. So I told him, I said, if you knew how little you had to lose, you would let it go. <laughs> Why? Because most people's mind is functioning on less than 10% of their mental capacity. You got 90% barren territory that is entertained by Andy Griffith. So I'm just telling you, 
and by video games come on now and Sanford and Son. So I'm just telling you, your mind is functioning on such a low level of its capacity, but if you'll get filled with the Holy Spirit, he'll make you lose your mind and get the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ means the anointing will come upon your mind. Hallelujah. So we want to talk about joy and the Holy Ghost. So Jesus said, the way you receive the Holy Spirit is you do it through drinking. He said, come and drink. Now, if you're going to drink from the presence of the Lord, actually, it's good to have drinking friends. <laughs> it also helps to have drinking music. And I know something about drinking. You cannot drink with your mouth shut. Let's try that again. I said you cannot drink with your mouth shut. That means in the scripture in the Old Testament said, if you will open your mouth wide, God said, I'll fill your mouth. And he's talking about the latter rain or the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In other words, when you come to God, you say, Lord, I'm ready to drink right now. And you open your mouth. And when you take a drink from the presence of Jesus, come on now, you're not talking about just a bunch of rules and liturgy. You're talking about an experience with Jesus Christ. You drink from his presence. And if people say, well, did I get a drink? Listen, if you have to ask, you did not. <laughs> Even a kid knows when they got a drink. <laughs> Come on, my little grandkids, I'll begin to say, I didn't get none, Poppy. All right, and I usually pour it all the way down their shirt. Now, <laughs> Jesus said, if you're thirsty, come to me and drink. So I said, Lord, why did you start off and say, if you're thirsty? He said, because I'm really not talking to anybody else. I'm only talking to thirsty people. That means if you're pretty much settled where you are in life, then you just go ahead and stay there. But if you're thirsty and believe God has more for you and he has greater things for you, if you're thirsty, Jesus said, you come to me and drink. You don't have to go through the secretary. You don't even have to have an appointment. I'm open 24-7, 365 in the middle of the night. Come on, you can come to him and drink from his presence. He said, and when you drink from his presence, rivers of living water start flowing out of your belly. So when he said rivers of living water, the word living is a derivative of the word zoe, which means a God kind of life. That means this ain't normal water. He said, if you drink this water, come on, he told the woman at the well, if you drink this water, you'll never thirst again. Yes, you know, she'd had five husbands. Come on now. Man, she's living with them. It wasn't even her husband, right? But Jesus said, if you'll drink this living water, you'll be satisfied. Come on. And she had lived her life with the song from the 60s. I can't get no, 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 no satisfaction. And I tried and I tried and I tried and I can't get no, I can't get no satisfaction. And I tried. But the moment you take a drink from Jesus, you'll be satisfied. He satisfies the hungry soul and fills the longing with his goodness and his presence. When you leave, you say, I'm satisfied. Even if you're driving an old truck with no leather seats, come on, you'll say, I'm satisfied. You'll be happier on a bicycle when you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, it didn't make it smell better in there, but I didn't want to tell you that. So, just a little smell in there. All right. So, joy. Now, let me just tell you something else. You cannot get a sad Holy Ghost. But sometimes Pentecostal people are the saddest people in the world. Even when they pray in tongues, they pray in sad tongues. They're like, -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do -ba. come on now. You ought to have a happy tongue every now and then.
Did you know even the anointing is called the oil of joy? All right, let me try that again. I said the anointing is called the oil of what? The anointing is called the oil of joy. You cannot get a sad anointing. The anointing that destroys every yoke, lifts every burden, and equips you for the supernatural is the oil of joy. In other words, the Holy Spirit will have you laughing at the most unusual times. You'll even tell him, I don't think this is a good time. <laughs> Say, what you talking about, preacher? Listen. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Everybody say joy, joy. in the Holy Ghost. In other words, you don't have to have no comedian for this. You don't need no entertainment for this. Come on, you can't get this at the mall. When you get filled with the Holy Ghost, come on, you're just full of joy. Everybody else is disturbed, upset, frustrated, burdened, and worried, but you're walking around going, hey, how y'all doing? You say, what happened? I got joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Smith Wigglesworth said, faith laughs at impossibilities. I want you to pick out three things that look impossible and laugh at it right now. Think about it. Just go. And if it's your husband or wife, don't look at them right now. I'm just telling you. Come on, pick out three things that look impossible. Come on, the devil may say your husband's never going to change. Your wife's never going to change. Ha, 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 ha. Come on, you'll never be able to afford a house. Ha, ha, ha. Come on, your body will never get well again. Ha, ha, ha. Come on now, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of you. The anointing and the oil of joy come upon you. Have you laughing at impossibility? God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to his power that works in you. That's right. Practice laughing right now. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Everybody say joy. Joy. In the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. Fresh oil would be an oil of joy. So some people, they just need an oil change. I mean, you can tell by looking at them like you got gunk in your oil pan, man. I mean, you need a fresh oil. Now, Acts. <laughs> Come on, I'm declaring that the rest of this year, you're going to have more fun than you had the first part of this year. I said you're going to have more fun the rest of this year than you did the first part of the year. Come on, because the Lord. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Joy. All right, turn to Acts 13, 52. Put it up here real quickly here, and I'm going to try to wrap this up a little bit. Praise the Lord. I don't want to lose too many of you. I see some of you, you know, I need to give you a banana or something, more potassium to help you out. I'm laughing because my mama, we went to church all of our life, you know, and we had long services, right? So my mama had a big purse down there, and she'd have like a little piece of bread, and a banana, <laughs> and you could see if the service went for a couple hours, my mom would see reach in there, she'd take a bite of the banana. <laughs> so y'all go ahead and bring a sandwich, all right, we'll be all right. Now, Acts 13, 52, it says, and the disciples, who's that? Those that are following Jesus, were filled. All right, let's try that again. And the disciples, come on. That means if you're hanging out with the people that are following Jesus in the book of Acts, it says these people were the happiest people in town. All right, let's try that again. I said the ones who were following Jesus, they were marked by joy. It didn't mean they didn't have persecution. It did not mean they did not have adversity, but they had joy in the Holy Ghost, and that joy is your strength. 
In other words, the happiest people in all of Reno, Nevada are not down there at the casino playing the quarter machine or the dollar machine or the poker table. You say, well, they want some money. They'll stay there till they lose it. But let me just tell you this. When you got the Holy Ghost, you can keep the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And he'll increase on the inside of you. So the happiest people. I said the happiest people in Nevada and in Reno tonight are here. You say, well, why in the world should I be happy? Jesus said, don't even rejoice because demons are subject to you. He said, but rejoice because your name is written down in heaven. When you know you have eternal life, come on now, you can rejoice. You can be full of joy. Amen. So somebody may tell you some bad news or something. They may say, ah, you're, you're ugly. You say, at least I ain't going to hell. <laughs> Come on, you, you can wear that T-shirt that said, I may be fat, but you're ugly, and I can lose weight. You may go to the dentist and he says, you got crooked teeth. And you say, yeah, but you got bad breath. No. Or you can say, <laughs> you go to the dentist, he may say, I'm going to have to pull all your teeth. You say, at least I ain't going to hell. <laughs> Come on, your girlfriend might leave you. Or your wife might leave you. Come on, pick the fine time to leave me, Lucille. Come on. Come on, but at least you ain't going to hell. No matter what's happening, you say, at least I ain't going to hell. Matter of fact, at your funeral, you ought to tell the mortician to go ahead and put a smile on your face. <laughs> so when people look over in the caskets, you're like, they, they say, Woo, what is going on here? You say, absent from the body, present with the Lord. I ain't going to hell. I have eternal life. Whether you have a bicycle or a Mercedes, if your name is written down in heaven, whether you're tall or short, are you pretty, are you ain't so pretty, are your teeth are crooked, are your breath is bad, come on now, are you ain't got no hair on your head, are you got too much hair, are you got a wig. It don't matter. If you have eternal life, you're the happiest person on the face of the earth. Whoa, come on. If you died in your sleep tonight, whoa. Doctor said, you only got six months to live. You say, but I ain't going to hell. Say, <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to die. You say, last I checked, we all going to die, but I ain't going to hell. <laughs> In other words, he said, rejoice because your name. Ha, ha, ha. Just practice that. Ha, ha, ha. Rejoice because you know. You're saved and you have eternal life. Amen. The joy that comes when you're filled with the Holy Ghost and you're following Jesus, he said, that's a mark of disciples. That means when people come in, they ought to say, you know, there's some happy people in there. Now, when I was 17 years old, my dad and four deacons had just got me out of jail and my mama and daddy shipped me to East Africa. One-way ticket. <laughs> I didn't have no car, no rock and roll music, and no friends, man. They sent me into the bush of East Africa. <laughs> I was 17, small brat. Come on. <laughs> and I had to help the missionary build churches and stuff like that. Well, we went to the, to the bush churches, you know, where the, way out in the country, little wooden churches where you couldn't even stand up. And I noticed the people there had no running water. Come on, very little food, and I noticed they were happier than I was. I was ashamed that they were so happy, and they would sing about heaven and sing about Jesus, and they were so happy. Come on, had no advantages in this world, but they were happier than I was. Come on, some of y'all are just spoiled. You complain about things that people on the other side of the world don't even think about happening. 
come on now. But when you know you have eternal life, they're so happy they're singing about heaven. Listen, this world is just a little portion of time and is very temporary, but throughout eternity, God will be showing the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness for the next 10 billion years. Come on now. We have eternal life. We have Jesus as our Lord. Rejoice because your name is written down in heaven. Ha-ha! Ha-ha! Uh -huh. Just practice a minute. Ha-ha-ha! Uh -huh. Psalm 126, put that up there real quickly. Psalm 126, because I believe God this is happening right here tonight. Here's what it says, Psalm 126. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. We were like those that dream. It's like a dream coming to pass. Instead of your life being like a nightmare, it's like a dream. When the Lord turned our captivity, we were like those that dream. Here's the way the Lord said it to me. I said, Lord, I knew you were good. I just didn't know you were that good. Amen. You're just like, it's like a dream. Uh-huh. When the Lord turned our captivity, we were like those that dream. What's the next verse say? Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue was singing, and they said among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord turned again our captivity. What does that mean? If he's turned it once, he can turn it again. He turned our captivity and filled our mouth with laughter. Ah. Uh -huh. Someone said, what are you laughing about? You say, the Lord turned my captivity. And it's like a dream coming to pass. And I'm laughing, ha, ha, ha. And the heathen are going to say, the Lord has done great things for them. So there is a supernatural laugh of faith, and there's a supernatural laugh in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> People say, well, I would laugh if the Lord would make me laugh. Listen, the Lord ain't going to make you laugh. If the Lord made you do anything, he'd make you pay your tithes, and that hadn't happened yet. So I'm just telling you, he ain't going to make you laugh. <laughs> no, you have to volunteer for the program. Amen. <laughs> In other words, you'll have to say, Lord, I believe you have turned my captivity, and now I'm going to go ahead and laugh about it. Amen. In other words, that laughter or that joy is a demonstration of the triumph of Christ. That joy is a demonstration to let the devil know that he is no longer dominating your life. That joy is a demonstration of faith that you can laugh at impossibilities. That joy that while you're laughing, one of my favorite quotes comes from a man by the name of C.S. Lewis that he said, joy is the serious business of heaven. I thought, what a great way to say that. I can't say it any better, so I just said it like that. Joy is the serious business of heaven. All right, let's try that again. Joy is the serious business of heaven. All right, let's try it this way. Joy is serious business. All right, let's try it again. Joy is the serious business of heaven. All right, now just do the first part. Joy is serious business. So when the devil's telling you, boy, you better take your situation serious, you laugh and say, I'm taking this about as serious as I possibly can right now. This is so serious, I'm going to have to laugh and rejoice and jump up and down and run around the house because joy is the serious business of heaven. And beside the river. Thank you for watching Demonstrations of Faith, a ministry outreach of Faith Alive Christian Center in Reno, Nevada. If you don't have a home church, we invite you to come and connect with us. We have ministry for the entire family on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. 
Our Connect Youth Ministry meets on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. Child care is available for all services. Our location is 120 Hubbard Way, half block east of the Pepper Mill in Reno. You can find us online at faithalive.net or by searching for Faith Alive at all social media outlets. Thanks for watching and join us next week for Demonstrations of Faith. And it's flowing to me. It's holy.